I'm taking a brief break from Girls and Panzer this week to highlight another anime that both has several things in common with it, at least in the general genre terms, but is also a very different show in many respects, one that's gotten far less attention. That show being, Azure Lane, the animation. Now, before I talk about the show itself and why it was significantly better than what I expected, there are a couple of things to clear up up front. While I enjoyed it and would term it pretty good overall, it's not particularly great. I'll touch on a couple reasons why later. Also, I am judging it as I did when I first watched it, on its own merits alone, not in comparison to the game's story, for instance. I know lots of fans of the game weren't huge fans of certain aspects of the story, or how some characters were portrayed, and having now played the game for nearly a year, I have a better understanding why. But to be honest, I'm not super well versed in the game's story as of now. I chose to watch this show when I did, despite having had no experience with the game at that point, largely because I'd been binging a lot of documentaries on World War II naval history at the time, and because I wanted to watch another military Moe show as I worked more on my own military Moe project. More on that soon, God willing. All I knew going in was that it was about ship girls, based on World War II warships that really existed, and that it was based on a gotcha game. So that's a frame of reference I'm going to apply for purposes of this short analysis. So let's get to it then. Spoiler warning, of course, for anybody who cares. I'll start with a very brief summary of the premise. In order to fight invading aliens called Sirens, humanity united and created human-like beings of warships to fight them. However, before the events of the show, that alliance fractured into two due to a clash of ideals, Azerlane and Red Axis, giving us a pseudo-World War II setup. U.S. and U.K.-based ship girls of Azerlane versus the German and Japanese ones of Red Axis. Red Axis is open to using Siren tech to get stronger to fight them, while Azerlane rejects that as too risky. There are a lot of characters in this show, but it does focus primarily on just a few. Enterprise and Belfast, Akagi and Kaga, and the sort of starter crew, Javelin, Laffy, Unicorn, and Ayanami. Which is still kind of a lot, not even counting major supporting characters like Best Girl Cleveland. But this is where we get to the first thing that the show does right. It gives you effective characterization of very likable characters really early on. You know pretty well what type of girls Laffy, Javelin, and Unicorn are from the very first episode, for example. And to indulge my Cleveland bias, seeing her be the first to immediately run into action when the base gets Pearl Harbored made me instantly like her. While most of the show's focus is on Azerlane girls, it doesn't completely neglect the other side of the conflict, at least the Sakura Empire girls. Iron Blood, and especially poor Z-23, kind of got the shortest end of the stick here. Eagle Union via Enterprise and Sakura Empire via Akagi are the central focuses of both the conflict and the show as a whole. Highlighting the parallels between the two sides was another great choice. It works as a way to show one of the anime's main themes too, that being the importance of setting aside small differences to fight a much greater evil. We're shown again and again that the girls of Red Axis and those of Azerlane really aren't all that different in most respects. We see the bonds between sister ships on both sides, and how ships on both sides are willing to risk themselves for others. Also, the slice of life sections on both sides of the fence manage to serve a purpose beyond having cute girls doing cute things, and saving a little bit on the animation budget. It showed us another parallel between the two enemy sides. And when it comes to the main conflict and our main drivers of larger plot elements on each side, they do a really interesting parallel between Enterprise and Akagi. Both have lost a beloved sister, though Yorktown technically hasn't died, she's just crippled, and are suffering as they try to cope with that and with their own fears, but in different ways. Enterprise kind of shut down emotionally, focusing solely on fighting to avoid facing her fear and almost killing herself in the process, while Akagi made a deal with the proverbial devil to try and get Amagi back, and in the process almost gets everyone around her killed. They're also both haunted by visions of a dark future. It's why in the end, it had to be Enterprise after being saved from losing herself to pull Akagi back from the brink. The other major thread is the tie between the lower ranked girls, for lack of a better term, who are on different sides as they become friends and decide that they don't want to fight anymore, thus helping forge an eventual necessary alliance to stop the bad guys. It's more a let's not fight over petty differences and unite against a real enemy type of thing than just war bad as a basic theme, which I also did appreciate. There's also some interesting weaving in of supporting characters in their thematic plot threads with the more major ones that help further the story, such as Zui Kaku and Kaga and Cleveland and Enterprise. While it's not a particularly complex story, there is a bit more going on than you might initially think. Another thing I feel the show did pretty well was the interjection of comedic moments into its action. While I usually don't like it when comedy cuts into tense scenes, for some reason it worked pretty well here. Maybe it's because a lot of the humor came from the somewhat quirky personalities of several of the girls laughing and looking at you. The show's tone also isn't particularly dark, so that probably helped prevent the comedic moments from taking me out of things. Azerlane, the animation, isn't doing anything particularly profound or groundbreaking here. 
but that's not really a negative. Trying to do something like that probably wouldn't have worked and it would have ended up a mess. But on the other side of the coin, it's also admirable that, considering this is basically an advertisement for a gacha game, that they didn't completely phone in the production. There is effort put into the story and characters, and while the animation showed its budgetary limits at times, when they want to put on a good show, the animation is great. This does want to be a real anime, and not only a glorified commercial, and I can respect that. There's also an excellent soundtrack which, as an awesome person on YouTube showed, can slot perfectly into scenes from the 2019 Midway movie. I'll leave links below in the description for you to check that out. This show both managed to not try too hard, while also putting in just enough effort to produce 12 entertaining episodes for what it is. And hey, it worked as an advertisement, since I've been an active player of the game from not long after I watched it. I may or may not be doing some farming in-game while I'm recording this video. So while as a direct adaptation of the game it doesn't get particularly high marks, and there are other issues of course, such as some very basic dialogue at times, and fan service scenes that seem there just to check off a box, which I'm not personally a fan of, it really isn't a bad show, somehow. There are far worse ways to spend about 4 hours of your time. If you haven't played the game and feel like checking out a one season show, consider giving it a watch. If you're a fan of the game and the lore, you probably don't need me to tell you that the Slow Ahead miniseries is probably more your speed. Actually, as I rewatched this show in preparation for the video, I did realize that there was a bit more to talk about than I initially thought, but I wanted to keep this video at a manageable length so editing doesn't take me all week. If you're interested in another video or two taking a closer look at Azure Lane the Animation, let me know in the comments and I'll consider doing that at some point. If you've seen it too, what did you think? Let me know as well. If you enjoyed this video and like to support the channel, links to my books and light novels are below in the description. Additionally, check out my Patreon. Among other rewards, such as early looks at new updates for my mecha serial, my light novels, and more, you get to see future videos early. And, of course, if you have any thoughts on this video, or other aspects of the show, or I guess Agile Lane in general, that you'd like me to talk about, definitely let me know in the comments section below. I love to hear what you think, and I do my best to read and respond to all the comments. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. That's all for now, so until next time.